for that purpose. The first thing he said is that for Spectrum, all applications must be made before 1st October 2007. Now, in 2001, when this process of licensing started, we had only 40 million mobile telephones. In 2008, when the spectrum was given, 2G spectrum, it was 700 million cell phones. Such was the market, grown. Most people don't know what is the difference between 1G, 2G, 3G. Even the Prime Minister did not know. <laughs> because I asked him, do you know what 2G is? He said, yes, Sonia G and Rahul G. <laughs> G stands for generation. The first generation is the cordless, where only your voice goes in a, in a wave, but long waves, long cycles. Then 2G, not only your voice goes, but email also goes, SMS also goes, MMS also goes, even pictures go. And they are shorter cycles. The third generation 3G, your video of speaking will go and the video of the person who is speaking, who will pick up the phone, it will also come to you. So that's the 3G. 4G will have even more data and there will be more and more cycles. So then, the sky has to be partitioned to see these waves of, of different countries, different mobile operators do not clash. And that's why the spectrum, as it's called, has to be partitioned. <coughs> Normally, since it's a scarce resource, it should be auctioned. But rather decided in auction, my friends have no chance. So I will not have an auction. I will say first come first served. And he said first you apply by 1st October 2007. These two friends were told you apply by 25th September. So Swan and Unitech applied on 25th September. The day the press release came out that up to 1st October you can apply. After everybody had applied, there were 42 companies with 517 applications from different, for different parts of the country. For three months, Raja did nothing. Then on 10th January, he issued another press release saying that although I had said that you can up, those who applied by 1st October 2007, and their application will be considered. Now I have decided that only those who applied on 25th September or before, they will be considered. That is totally illegal. If he had said it before 1st October, no, no, only 25th, then understandable. But after three months when everything is being completed, he brought this new thing. He also said one more thing. And the press release comes out at 2.45 p.m. in the ministry website, not in the newspaper. 2.45 p.m. the press release comes out that between 3.30 and 4.30 whoever brings 1650 crore rupees in demand draft, which is the price of the spectrum, only they will be considered. Now you tell me, at 2.45 we are told, bring me a demand draft for 1650 crore rupees. Is it possible that the Indian banking system, even one crore in the demand draft you not get? But he had informed some people in advance. As far as Swan and Intec is concerned, they were sitting in the minister's room when the press release was released. And they had the demand draft already in their pocket. 1650 crores was the price of the spectrum based on what was prevailing as the price in 2001. The price in uh, 2008 was 10 times more. But he sold these licenses 
two of his favorite and seven others, including Tata's, Vodekman, uh, Videocon, etc., etc. And nine companies got the licenses. Now, as far as Swan Telecom is concerned and, and uh, uh, Unitech was concerned, they knew they can't run a telecom business. They're not even one tower. So what they did was, they sold it to two foreign companies. One was Eti Salat and the other was Telenor. Surprisingly, the Home Ministry had an advisory in another context that under no circumstances Eti Salat and Telenor should be allowed to do any business in India because they are a national security risk. What is the national security risk? That Eti Salat was a company controlled by ISI. And its India branch was headed by a man called Shahid Balwa, who was now the brand's right hand man. And therefore, they should not be allowed. Second, Telenor is a company which is maybe a Norwegian company, but it does all its business in Pakistan and uh, Bangladesh. And its equipment are, is bought from the Chinese People's Army, which equipment can also be used for cyber warfare. And therefore, in a time of a war between India and China, these equipment may be used to black out all our computers in the defense ministry. So they should not be allowed. But Raja allowed it. So clear misuse of office in the selection of the candidate of the applications, in the price that he fixed, and the permission he gave for them to sell it. And Swan sold, Swan and Unitech sold it for how much? Eight times. The market price difference was ten times. But they sold it for eight times. <coughs> then Tata also said, why I should not sell some of my shares? But Tata had already a growing business, so it got a higher price. They sold it to Docomo of Japan for thirteen times. Videocon sold. Loop, which is uh, Louis, that also sold. All of them made money. Windfall profit. Just by getting a license and selling it to the shares to somebody else. Had we optioned the 2G spectrum, the nation would have got 10 times more. And that works out to 1,76,000 crores more. When I gave these figures to the Supreme Court judges, one judge asked me, how many zeros is that? <laughs> so I said, 11 zeros. He said, by God, I've never seen so many zeros in my life. 1,76,000 crores, 40 billion dollars. Lost to the nation. That is enough to build your entire modern infrastructure of ports, of airports, of roads, and 100 brand new universities with all its modern facilitation. And it has gone into these people's pockets. Of course, these companies were very happy with Raja, so they gave him 60,000 crores in bribe. Of this 1,76,000 crores. But Raja knew that he can't take all 60,000 crores because there are people above him also. <laughs> First of all, I was surprised to learn later that there was a cabinet decision that the price of spectrum will not be decided by Raja alone as Minister of Telecom, but he has to decide jointly with the then Minister of Finance, Chidambara. And I've got a document showing both of them have signed for 2,000 dollars. <coughs> Raja also did not allow Swan and uh, Unitech to sell to A.T. Sadat and Telenor on his own. He has himself written a file note that I was encouraged to do so by Chidambara. So if Raja is inside jail, why should Chidambara be outside? <laughs> so I find a petition 
asking the Supreme Court, please, <coughs> became also an accused. Asked the CBI to investigate him. The court heard me and said, we want to hear what the CBI has to say about this. Tried to, they wanted to fix a date in July, but I was at Harvard, so I said, can it be in August? They gave me August 24th. After that, Chidambaram will have to go to Tihar. Nowadays it's called Club Tihar. <laughs> <laughs> they are now preparing masala dosa and all that. Italians <laughs> <laughs> there. All them also get ready for pizza very soon. <laughs> Very good, very good. When can we see that? Well, <laughs> well, don't be in a hurry. 1857 was blown because Mangal Pandey wanted to be in a hurry. No hurry. It's a law halal process. So, they are secular people, so I have to do halal. Anyway, the fact of the matter is that 24th August, this matter will be argued. 